Hi, I'm Daniel Cox and welcome to another episode of Photo Tips from the Field. Sponsored by Marsha Lewis and my friends at Bozeman Camera, the small town store big time dealer I like to call them. So today I want to share with you my system for getting your equipment from point A to point B in the civilized world, airports and cities, etc using roller cases and once I get to my destination being able to take that equipment into the field in a much more comfortable and efficient manner via a backpack. I get this question all the time, how do you carry your gear? I've seen and experienced many of the things that most people do. One, some people use just a roller bag and when they get to their destination have a difficult time getting their equipment into the field effectively. Then there's the others who use their backpacks that is great for when you get to your destination for getting into the field, but creates a lot of pain in your travels through airports and cities where you've got all this equipment on your back. So I've come up with a system that allows me to do both, and I'm going to share that with you today. I've got several different backpacks with me, a couple of them that I regularly use, a couple new ones that I'm looking at, and I've got a couple of roller bags that we'll go over as well. So to start with, let's talk about the roller cases. On the right here is a roller case that I've used for many, many years, the Low Pro Pro Roller 200. Now you'll notice that I don't have any inserts in here whatsoever for the camera gear. We're going to talk about those things. One of the inserts that I use, and I'll grab this right now, is the F-Stop Large ICU. And this is what I started with when I started thinking about how to use these camera bags camera packs and camera roller bags to get my gear into the field. You'll notice how small and light this is. The beauty of this thing, made by a totally different company, fits in here just beautifully, as if it was almost made for it. Gives you a little more room up here where you can drop some other, other items. But in general, this is the main compartment that allows me to take my gear into the field. And we'll talk about how this then goes into a backpack once I get to the field. On the other side here, I have the Low Pro Highliner 400. Now, this bag I found in an airport, and it's not specifically made for camera gear. It's actually a suitcase, and when I found it, I loved the softness of the case. It's a little more packable than the Low Pro Pro Roller, and therefore the airlines don't give you so much trouble. You can get this up above, get this under your seats a little easier. But once again, I've used the same general idea and the same system of using a camera compartment, this one coming from the Low Pro Whistler that fits into this bag virtually perfectly with a little bit of room left up, up front. And once again, I can pop this out and put it in a backpack. So these are the two roller cases that I use. So as you can see, I can get a lot of gear in here. I've got the Olympus EM-1X with a 300 millimeter four here. I've got my Lumix G9 with the 50 to 200 here. I have the Lumix G9 with the 8 to 18 over here on the side. I've got the 12 to 60 in the middle here, a 1.4 times teleconverter for both the Olympus and the Panasonic here. I've got a two times teleconverter, the Olympus two times teleconverter here, a macro lens there. I've got my Leica binoculars here. So I can get a lot of stuff in here. In the front, I've got extra batteries, electronics in there. I have the leaf filter, split neutral densities here, and my think tank card holder there. Lots of room for here where I can put microphones. And incidentals, I put my battery chargers in here, which are not here right now, but that's what I put in there. Some more filters up front. Uh, big stopper for long exposure stuff. The neutral density filters for video. And so that's what I keep in this bag. Uh, great bag. You can see it's got a lot of compartments. It's got lots of loops for hooking things like a carabiner that you can attach different things to. Uh, it's got the clips that if you'd ever lose your zipper, you can clip this down and tighten these up. It's got an 
all-weather bag here for, for protecting it from the weather. Okay. And it all rolls. So that's my current favorite bag to roll my gear from Bozeman, Montana to wherever I'm going, through the airports and through civilization. The Low Pro Highliner 400, they call it. Now, let's go over to what I used to use and still is a good option, which is Low Pro Pro Roller 200. As, you, as I mentioned earlier, here's the F-stop insert that fits in there like a glove, like it was made for it practically. I'm going to put that up here for right now, and I'm going to grab the insert from the Highliner, which comes out of the Low Pro Whistler 400 backpack. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But as you can see, I can take this and drop it right in to the Low Pro Pro Roller. So once again, I can get this gear from point A to point B very easily in a roller case. With a little bit of room up here left over, maybe for microphones, that sort of thing. As you can see, there's kind of a theme going here. Inserts into roller bags. And amazingly, as I'm going to show you, I've got four different backpacks with four of the different companies' inserts. They all fit in the Low Pro Pro Roller 200, and they all fit in the Low Pro Highliner 400. And I'm guessing there's other bags out there, in particular other suitcases that you could easily replicate the Pro Roller or the Highliner and drop these inserts into suitcases as well. So let me introduce you to my favorite backpacks so far and the ones that I'm using and the ones that I'm looking at. And I'll start off with the Mindshift Backlight Elite 45L. So 45 stands for how many, how the capacity of this, 45 liters I believe it is. Great backpack, probably the most robust of all the packs that I'm trying. And it has a backside opening where you drop what F-Stop calls the internal camera unit. But the second bag that I just received and want to talk about that I'm really impressed with is the Shimoda. And this, I believe, is the 40 liter. They make one that's 60. But 60 is way bigger than I need to get my cameras into the field. Quite a bit smaller than the Mindshift backpack, probably more the size that I really want to use. So we'll, we'll talk about that. I haven't used this yet. We just got this. Got a back door for easy access to your camera gear. And we'll go over that in a minute in depth. The third one that we're working with is the Low Pro Whistler. And very well done, very nice pack, maybe a little overbuilt, and we'll talk about that. It's hard to complain about something that's overbuilt, except for when you're trying to get, you know, be as light and mobile as possible. But very well done. We'll talk about that. And finally, the bag that started all of this for me, that I, I really started thinking about how to do this system, is the F-Stop Gear Ajna, which is probably... The best one I've found so far that packs down really tight and small when you take the internal camera unit out. Now, this ICU is actually made by F-Stop and it goes in this pack like so. All right, that's how it works. So you can see that it doesn't crush down. The key to this system is taking the inserts out so that you can put that internal camera unit in one of these two roller bags, squash it down and put it in your duffel bag. So this is how I typically travel to my destinations with my main gear. Open this up and on the bottom, this is an Eddie Bauer duffel bag, which I really like because of the hard sided compartment down here. You can put boots and all that sort of thing in here. And you'll notice that this fits in there really well, nice and easy. Zip it up, and you've now got your backpack with you so that when you get to your destination, you can pull it out, put the ICU in it, and away you go. You can backpack your gear into the field. So there you have it. That's the system that I use to get from civilization to the wilderness with the most comfort and efficiency. All four of these bags work really well. The concept here is to use a roller bag to get from point A to point B while you're in civilization and you have 
nice flat surfaces to roll it across, keep it off your back. So whether you're hiking in the mountains, in a boat, on a tram, whatever you might be doing, you can put the camera gear in a backpack that's waterproof, protective, and take it into the outdoors with you in a way that's more efficient than a roller bag would be. So as we talked about, we've got the Shimoda 40 liter. We've got the F-Stop Agena. I believe it's a 40 liter. We've got the Low Pro Whistler 45 liter and the Mindshift Elite 45 liter. All of them great choices for working in the field. All of the internal camera units can be mixed and matched between any of these backpacks and will fit in the Highliner 400 or the Low Pro Pro Roller 200. And there will be many other types of suitcases that these internal camera units would fit in as well. You wouldn't have to use the Highliner or the Pro Roller 200. You can take any suitcase off the shelf that is basically the same size or a little bit bigger than the internal camera units and have a similar system. So thank you for joining me. I'm Daniel Cox with Natural Exposures TV with another photo tips from the field. If you like this, subscribe to the channel and come visit us on a regular basis. We'll be continuing to do more of these types of things with gear, photography, and other things that I believe in. Thanks for joining me. And before I go, I want to give a shout out to Bozeman Camera right here in Bozeman, Montana. I'm very fortunate to have such an incredible high quality camera store right here in my hometown. The small town store, big time dealer, I like to call them. If you have photographic needs, they ship to anywhere in the country and they do a great job and you'll enjoy dealing with the people on the other end of the phone. So thanks a lot, Bozeman Camera. We really appreciate your help. Subscribe to the channel below and join me in the future with Natural Exposures TV where we talk about all things related to photography and the great outdoors. <laughs>